Hey there, product launchers. Welcome back to another Office Hours. This one is with Laura Hazard, our market research, consumer market research expert on all things quantitative and qualitative market research. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Hazard. I'm your resident um, research expert here in Product Launch Hazards. Thanks for joining today. Um, this is one of kind of my first videos with you all. So I think it's important for us before we get too far into the nitty gritty, wow, nitty gritty details to kind of take a step back and look at research for new products in general and what to do and when. So today we're covering what types of research, because there's tons of types to do, and when to do it. So I know all of you are at different stages in your product development. So some of you have an idea, an invention, you think it's gonna be awesome. Um, so you're sort of in that idea phase. Some of you are in prototyping phases, and some of you have a product that's out on the market, but it's new, um, and then others are maybe looking to expand. So we're gonna be talking through all the different phases and how to incorporate research and why it's important to research at each of these phases. Um, feel free to jump in with questions. Um, it's gonna be a lot of information, so you can follow up on the blog after or send me an email. I'm more than happy to dive into this with you. Okay, so starting off, you have an idea. So this is very beginning. Um, it's really important to make sure that your idea sticks with others that other people need your product, will buy your product, and love your product. Um, you know, you already have a lot of knowledge, um, so it's important to kind of get it down on paper and start a database. So this is what I call secondary research, it's where we all begin. Um, and even if you're further in the process and you haven't done this, take a step back and do this. So what I mean by secondary research, this is information that already exists out in the world. This is your competitors, what products exist, um, the marketing and who's talking, what the stores are doing in your industry, in your category. Um, so by doing this research, it's literally hitting the ground. It's going into stores, looking at shelves, taking photos, um, writing down the prices, the colors, all the attributes. Also going online, Going through Amazon and seeing what is available now, doing a complete audit of your marketplace. You should really be able, once you do this, you should really be able to answer some of these questions. Then you'll kind of know if you did it right. Um, so who owns the market? Who's the leader? Even if your product is something totally new and unique, consumers are, are accounting for something in their life. So if you have a brand new, let's say, um, facial product or acne, um, you know, even if it's totally revolutionizing, um, some consumers are already doing something. So you should know who's your leader in the market, um, who owns it, and also who's coming up and is cool and unique. Who are the potential threats? What are the prices for what's going to be your competition? What are people spending, willing to spend? What's the good, better, best pricing? Will your product be premium? Will it be value driven? Um, if you don't know now, that's okay, but you should know the tiers, what colors, styles, what's available, all of those attributes. And also, how is your competition advertising right now? Are they doing kind of print, TV, traditional? Are they on YouTube, doing infomercials? Are they on Instagram, Facebook? Get the lay of the land, because you're going to need all this information as you start to create a product and a brand. Um, and also just something to consider that is, you know, newer in the last five years is who are the influencers in your marketplace? Um, an influencer is someone that people listen to. This could be um, the owner of a corporation, could be a professor that's really important in your industry. It could be a celebrity. Um, it could also be a YouTube star. Um, there's different influence out there, influencers out there, and you need to know who's important. So not just the brands, but who. Um, okay, so once you have all this information, you gotta put it into a database. I know Excel can sometimes be hard. Um, that usually works the best. So getting all of your information lined up. I know Tracy does this a lot with her clients when she's designing for them. Um, so it's really important to write it down so you can reference it later. Um, and get it all out there. So this is kind of the lay of the land. That's the secondary research of your competition. It's also important to talk to consumers. So 
you know, a lot of people think when I'm doing, you know, focus groups or online surveys, it's going to cost a lot of money and I haven't even started yet. What do I do? Um, it's okay. <laughs> There's a lot of research you can do um, that doesn't cost money. So start by talking to your friends and family. Tell them about your idea. Tell them what you're, what you want to invent. Get their feedback. Um, put it out on your own Facebook. Um, ask people to give their honest opinion on what they think of your idea, what they would pay for it. Um, a lot of this is really important. And people will be honest with you. And if they're your friends and family, they're going to care and they want to direct you to the right place. Um, you can also go into places, a lot of people don't think about going onto Reddit. So Reddit, if you're unfamiliar, you should definitely familiarize yourself. There are all of your consumers are organized on Reddit and they talk about products and they have opinions and there's these things called subreddits. Um, so if you, again, going back to skincare, there's a skincare subreddit. If you go into that, it's like a big community forum comments and posts. If you go in there and say, hey, I have this idea or what are you missing? What are you lacking? They'll give you feedback. Um, with that though, if you do have a little bit of money in the budget, I always recommend a quant survey um, that's going on in research, like collecting information, doing an online survey um, and understanding the data of who is interested in your product and what they will pay. If you're looking for investors to help fund your product development, you will need data because they're going to say, how do you know this is going to work? Well, you have to back it up with something. A quant survey, a lot of times is what investors are going to look for. Um, I also like a good focus group, even just a couple, pull together some people, talk to them about um, what they're looking for, what they're missing, will they buy your product, are they interested in it? Um, all right, so that's sort of kind of where you start. You want to make sure someone will buy your product. They want it, not just you and not just your mom. Um, consumers, and a lot of consumers, because we want to make a lot of money, right? All right, so. Now we have passed the threshold, we want the product, now it's time to create a prototype. So you're, you know, there's tons of experts in this group that can help you with prototyping and designing and getting it to a physical form. Um, a lot of people I work with take the physical form and just want to start. They want to find distributors, they want to find somewhere in China to manufacture and they're ready to go. They want to start their website and get going. I always say when you have a prototype, take a pause um, and do more research because now we have it in physical form. This is a really important critical time to make sure um, people still like it, they still want to buy it, and um, also test the usability. So usability research is really critical in the prototype phase. Um, and what that means is just researching how people interact and use your product. This can be done a couple different ways. I like, it depends on the product. So sometimes when you have a prototype, um, you can only create a couple because it's really expensive. That's okay. So if you only have a couple or even one, focus groups are gonna be your best. So that's where you bring people together, you show them the product and um, you see how they like it. See what they don't like, see what works, see what doesn't. Gives you a general sense and any red flags you need to fix before going into full production. If you're able to get multiple prototypes, like 25 to 50, then we do something called an in-home use test, an IHUT. Um, I love this one. So you send it out to people's homes and they test it in the natural environment where they would be using your product and um, fill out a survey. And sometimes they'll tell you exactly what they think, they'll rate it, they'll tell you what they pay for it. You get something in writing, again, for those investors. You can also have them take photos of them using it, videos of them using it. Um, it's just a really great way to collect a lot of information and make sure it's going to work properly before you spend all the money creating all of those products. Um, okay, so now that we've got the prototype, we've tested it, um, we're ready to start selling. So the research, you know, really the work, the work begins then. Um, because when you start going to market, you're introducing so many other things now. You're no longer in your bubble. You have not just the product to worry about, but you have your brand, your marketing, your advertising, your reviews, 
all of that, there's a lot more to worry about. Um, and research is a great way to keep a pulse on it so you're not up at night worried and nervous. Um, what's going to happen? You know, doing research can put you at ease. You know what's going on and you know what people are thinking. So I always recommend when you start selling a product to include some type of way to collect satisfaction surveys. So even it's just a little link when you put it in the box and you ship it off to someone, hey, fill out the survey and tell me what you think. We've all done them. You can sometimes give them a little incentive, your next, you know, 20% off your next purchase if you fill out the survey, whatever. Um, you can't be scared of it, and it's important to, to get that information back. So um, satisfaction tracking is a type of research. Um, it's a way to learn how things are going. Do they like it? Do they regret the purchase? Do they feel like they paid too much, or was it cheap? Could you raise the price? Um, how does this affect your brand? What's missing? What do they want next from you? This also helps if they really love your product, you can follow up and ask for a review online, an Amazon review, write something on Facebook, a testimonial. If they didn't like the product, it's also your opportunity to correct it. Um, your first you know, year in the life of your new product, it's really important that you pay close attention to what the consumer thinks and says about your product. You want them to share and post online to all their friends, buy it again, give it as a gift. Um, so satisfaction tracking is a great way to keep a pulse on that. Additionally, when you have your products um, and you know you have your one product and you might have more, it's important to continually do both quant and qual research. The quant, again, to make sure you know what's going on, you know what they think, and you start to track your brand. What do they think of this brand now? Um, is it an expensive brand? What types of marketing should this brand be doing? Should you be on Instagram? Should you have a YouTube star be promoting or testing your product? Um, you know, if you continually need seed money, again, that quant data and your sales data is what your investors are going to be looking for as they continue to, to support your business. Um, qual is also really important to continue on as your product hits the hits the world out there. Um, it's good to reconnect with your consumer and hear their voice. It's important to know how they talk about it as well. You get that a lot from Qual. Um, when your consumers have the product in front of them, they're going to use certain words to describe it that you may not have thought about. You can use that in your marketing messages. You can also start to get a deeper understanding of who your consumer is um, and what really matters to them. What are their core values? All of this will really kind of tie up who your brand is and where it's going because ultimately your, your new brand is not going to stop one product, right? You want to create more. You want to sell more. Um, so kind of the takeaway is you want to continually be doing research. Um, you know, we go back to phase one, remember all that secondary research? That has to continue as well. You need to make sure you always have a pulse on what's happening. It doesn't, the work does not stop once you have a best selling product because it may only be best selling for one season or one year. If you're not going back in store and seeing what other what the competition's doing, what they're charging, what promotions they're running at Target, um, you may miss out and it may completely tank and you got to see that coming. So your qual, your quant, and kind of that competitive analysis is critical to, critical to continue um, beyond, you know, just the initial phases. Of course, in all of these initial phases is important just to make sure you know, you, you're creating the right product, but we want to sustain your product and your brand. Um, so that's sort of kind of the overview of what to do. So I want to just quick summary at the beginning, pro, before your prototype, look at your competition, see what's going on and talk to consumers. Will they buy your product? Check. Step two, create the prototype, and now have people test it, that usability, that I had. Get it in the hands, learn what works, what doesn't. Step three, now it's in market, let's start some satisfaction tracking. Let's learn what they thought about it. Will they continue to buy? 
and let's continue to check in with our competitors, with our influencers, with our consumers on um, what's going on. So that's sort of the takeaway of, of where to go. Um, you know, there's a, the m main question I get from most people is this feels like a lot and I have no money. All my money is going into creating my prototypes and buying that inventory initially. I have no money. So, you know, I know it feels overwhelming and really expensive. It costs, you know, a couple thousand dollars to get started with your research. Um, if you don't have the budget, then one, you can reach out to consultants like myself. This type of group, by the way, of experts is a really affordable way to do some research, just kind of on your own, get some feedback from people that really know their stuff. Um, so start small. Talk to your friends and family and don't be scared to go online and just start posting um, questions and ideas and all of that online. Now, another thing I hear is, well, I don't want to tell people because I don't want people to steal my idea. Okay. If someone, I, I always struggle with this because I know we are so precious in our ideas and inventions, but at some point we do have to talk about it. Because if we keep everything under wraps, then it's scary because what if no one actually really likes it when you make it? So um, that is something that you will always struggle with in the initial phases. It's a question I get a lot. I don't want to tell people. I don't want to see it. You can always have people sign NDAs. Um, and it's just sort of the reality of inventing a product, you know? These people, we watch things like Shark Tank and they go on there and they have an idea. And um, I'm sure lots of us in our seats like, I thought of that 10 years ago. The reality is, is lots of people have ideas, but you have decided to take an action on it. A lot of people won't. So it wouldn't be too worried. You can always have people sign an NDA. Um, those are usually the most common questions that I get kind of about research in general. My, my next um, coming up episodes will be really diving into how to craft a quant survey. Like what questions do I ask? Um, in a focus group, how do I, how do I do that? So I'm going to dive into all of those pieces, um, but I'm more than happy to jump in on a call with you or answer a question if you want to send me an email and we can kind of talk through your whole timeline. I'll also be putting together kind of a summary slide. I'll upload it to my, to the blog post, um, kind of give an overview of what to do and when. So thank you so much for listening. And I'm so excited to start researching and going on this journey with you. Um, I'm your partner. I will be honest with you and I will, you know, help you make sure this is going to be totally a success. All right. Talk to you all soon. Thank you so much.